versus Take 3. One will move on to play Northern Gaming, and one team will be out. With the commentary of this match, it's going to be Leaf and Final Carpet. Take it away, guys. You know what is something I didn't think we'd be saying today? Is Flipside versus Take 3 in the lower semis. I am more than surprised, to be completely honest. But what's really funny is to look at just the mentalities of both these teams and how they're going into this. Take three a team that most people wrote off really early on, and look how far they've gotten. But flip side, a team with all the weight on their shoulders. They went so far, they came second last season. They went all the way to the finals through the entire loser's bracket, or lower bracket, apologies, all the way through, and they were able to make it to the finals. So they are the team that everyone's looking at to succeed. So I think just having that weight on their shoulders is a pretty big, steep, hill for them to have to climb every well, single match. We saw at the last land that energy and hype for your team can get you through. We'll see if it carries take three through in game number one of flip side tactics as Marky throws a quick one in. They are dealing with this weight easily right off the bat. We see Greasy Meister hitting that over to the side of Marky Duto following immediately. Brizzo and Zane Jackie both completely caught off guard, just grounded. Nothing they were going to be able to do to stop that one. First goal already in in four seconds in game number one. In this best of five, this is already a good start for Flipside. We'll see if they can carry it on, or if take three will be able to answer quickly. Insult trying to get something set up. Breezy will take away the chance. Insult trying to make sure that they keep that one. Pass out to Zane with a shot on net, and an answer only 15 seconds later. This is just a prime example of pace and how beating your opponent to the ball, you draw them out, and if you get them just before, we see Kutz here just a little bit shy, but Zane Jackie. Beating him to the pace, able to put it in. Now tying it up only 20 seconds in. Zane has been so fast this entire tournament, and he is not stopping now. As you said, already back tied up. Two goals in 20 seconds. Another one sent onto the net by Cooks here. That is stopped out by the defensive take three. Marky trying to get another play started up here. Insole and Rizzo in net, making sure that play dies out very quickly as they try to get a counterattack themselves. Far pass over to Zane Jackie. He can't quite get the touch he wanted. Not sure what Rizzo was doing, but it does end up going down into flip sides end as they try to get a play start up in front of the net. Marky will have to clear this one up to Cooks here. A passing play. Flip side is scary when they get these going, but not enough control for Cooks here, and he will give away possession as Rizzo contests that one. Back down into take three's side. Insole with a pass out to the defender. Zane with a nice long clear on target. A little bit above. Greasy putting it to the side just in case. And they're caught on the back heel now. Flipside taking some pressure from Take 3. Take 3 doing a good job of turning even their defense into pressure. Good hard clears right above the goal. It might not be on target, but if they don't contest those backboard shots we've seen so many times so far, even just today, what will happen when the team has that opportunity? Rizzo trying to back pass, realizing it wouldn't get to his teammate. Stays on the ball and stops a shot from Flipside. Greasy off the corner there. That will go in front of the net. A chance for Markey. If he can get one fast enough. Off the crossbar. Cooks here to follow. Insult does get in the way. Wins that 50-50. Back to Zane. They will have to... Oh, Zane! Some time. What? Whoa! Trying to go for a mind game. Doesn't quite work out for them. We'll still sit at a 1-1 game, but the pressure's still on from take three. If Insult can get this one sent right back in. Buying some time for his teammates. A little bit of an air drag there to get that pass, but Greasy stops it out at midfield. Look at the ball control from take three as they just get it back and forth to each other, making sure not to throw away possession and playing smart. St. Jackie not able to get a 50-50 on that. Cooks here keeps the pressure on. Out to Markey. Can he get one on net? Just a little bit past that one. And Zane has a chance. Take three. So good at counterattacks, but they are stopped out at midfield here. A shot Rizzo! from Rizzo. Off the crossbar. Doesn't find the back. Such a good shot from him. He was able to get a tighter angle than I think even Flipside was ready for. If that was just a little more accurate, it probably would have been in. Rizzo follows that one nicely off the backboard, but he will need some, felt, some help from his good friends clear. here. Insole up to Rizzo. St. Jackie to bring up the pressure. Shot on net. Stopped by Marky Duda. He does keep that at a tied game. 2.15 left in this match, and we haven't seen any more goals yet as Take 3 put in on a lot of pressure to Flipside, and I'm not sure they're ready for this. They are here and there, but overall, I think take three. They have interesting positioning. Oh, and now we're going to see Zajac and Rizzo just battle in the corner. Rizzo tries to get one out front there. Does get stopped out. Defense from take three a little bit iffy here, but they managed to collect themselves and regain control. Good pop up to Rizzo. Two people from flip side ready to meet that one. That leaves Zane and Cux here. Only one person in net. A little bit off target. Cux is able to save that, but Rizzo with the follow up. Cux, a beast in net. Keeps that one out. We're still tied. 1-1. Phenomenal recovery from Cooks here to be able to get there for the second save. 
Looked like Insol wanted to get the second shot, but I think he backflipped instead of being able to put it on target. So it gave Cooks here just enough time to get back. Incredible passing plays coming up from take three here. So they almost got one set up for Rizzo. That midfield passing. Insol with a double touch off the roof. Rizzo will pick this one up, but loses control. Breezy will have to follow this one himself. Gets that push down to take three's end, but quickly sent right back down to F3's side. Uh -oh. This was a chance. Cooks here out of play, but no one from take three able to get a play started up. Rizzo expecting to pass from Zane. Good back pass to Insole, though, as he takes control. A flip over. There's Rizzo. 50-50 going in. No one's real favor there. Insole will help to help Rizzo out. Zane, Jackie, Markey. Good patience from Markey to... Make sure he doesn't overcommit to that one, but back and forth here. 47 seconds left. We still see a tied game. Flipside having trouble getting another one in the net against Take 3. Both teams predicting each other well, but we see these great hard clears from Take 3 forcing all the Flipside players to try and go for that. We've seen Cooks here usually, but Greasy just had to go up. Trying to keep those threats on the board just to try and force Flipside. Oh, trying to buy him into that one. Now we see Flipside trying to put some pressure on us. I see that 30 seconds come up on the screen. Hopefully they don't overcommit, give up some defense power here. Cooks here off the roof. Markey a little bit too far behind to follow that one up. Zane will be able to push that across the midfield. Right over to Greasy, though, with a shot off the backboard. No one followed up. Zane has to get in the way. Cooks here had a shot. Stopped out. Four seconds left. We might see an overtime in game. Number one if this touches, but Greasy with a shot on net. It does touch the ground. And overtime in game number one. Rizzo would have been there for the shot, but I don't blame Greasy. You don't have much time. You might as well take it in the run. The, the rare chance. Rizzo. Oh, Rizzo. The score almost puts one in with a double tap, but Zane is not ready to give up yet. He keeps the pressure on, letting Rizzo back. Insole with a shot. Finally cleared out by Greasy as he chases this one down the field. Rizzo takes control. Cooks there. There to meet him in the air, but there's Zane with a shot off the backboard. Insole ready to fall. Off the crossbar. He misses. Zane can't follow that one up. They will have to go back to defense, but so many chances for a take three. So close, but they are still that pressure up on flip side, but they're going to try and counter. That is the danger of flip side. They keep cool no matter what comes their way. You have to at this point. There is so much pressure. You can't start to throw away the game here. Rizzo takes that one from Greasy up to Cux. He can't connect with that, expecting a touch from the defense there. That's going to one. Whoa! Greasy manages to put it in. 47 seconds into overtime. It goes on the flip side takes it. It goes on a pinch. Greasy tried to come in for the contest, and he beats it. He actually waited for the second touch, knowing Zane Jackie was going to try and clear it across field. It gives them the game one and an exciting overtime. Only one point determining the difference between these two teams right now. That was not a dominating effect from flip side that maybe some people were expecting. Take three held off so well against them and uh, I'm really excited to see the rest of the series now because Take 3 is showing up. When they faced each other yesterday, Take 3 was actually able to, what was it, I think it was 5-0 or 4-0 in the oh, second yeah. game of the series. So they were able to obviously bring it to a flip side, but it's interesting because flip side is one of the few teams I think that if they lose game one, it doesn't matter for them. Honestly, I think they take that and they just roll with it and that's usually when they usually pick up. They tend to sometimes give up that first game. Um, or not tend to, I should say, but when they do, they usually still perform really well. But as we know, take three, their attitude's been working out for them so far since they've been here. They're still having a good time. And if they're a team that can just take this loss lightheartedly, since that was such a close game, they can easily turn it around for the next one. Did I hear word of a giblet in the house somewhere? Giving us energy? I think that's what I just got word in. Oh, there, oh, there he is. Look, the giblet, the legend himself right there. The little spud. That is, uh, I want to see him team up with Scrub Killer. I wonder who he's rooting for. Gibbs, you got to let us know who he's rooting for. We'll see some predictions later, I guess. <laughs> but uh, getting back to, to the match at hand, I mean, Flipside just won that one, but not, like, again, super convincingly. So we'll see if, uh, if they'll be able to just pull ahead and dominate. I mean, they're so good in the lower bracket. I mean, we, we see them do this so much. Flipside is just infamous for this. But Take 3 has confidence. They are just so, like, you know, let's just do this. Let's have fun, guys. And again, we saw that happen with I Buy Power in the last one, and uh, they end up winning the whole thing. So, I mean, Take 3, really just the energy could help them. And I mentioned it before, if you take a look at Zane Jackie's positioning, he's always incredibly far up. He usually places himself way towards the net, almost like an uncomfortable closeness. I'm, I'm, it usually almost makes me feel a little woozy when I see where he's positioned because he's just waiting for that pass to come his way. And he actually has capitalized on it quite a lot of times so far, even just in the grand finals here. Um, but Rizzo usually really grounded, he stays far back. And Inso, we've seen some fantastic touches from him overall. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he follows through. He, he seems to be playing the third, at least in the last game. He was getting that last strike. He was following up for that other shot. 
you know, getting the angles, getting the air rolls, but, you know, Flipside's defense is still pretty strong. Well, again, I was talking with Lawler earlier, and, and uh, we're like, oh, we want to see Insul step up a lot, but really, I mean, he's been playing, you know, just a really good support for his team. I mean, Zane Jack, he's been so quick all over the place, and Rizzo with, I think yesterday, he had a 50% shooting percentage. That's just incredible. I think he was yeah. beating everyone. Half of the shots he takes, they're going in. I mean, that guy is scary on offense. If you can feed the ball to him, you're probably getting a goal on the scoreboard for your team. And one of the bigger things, you know, we know Rocket League is such a team-based, you know, competitive format. So no matter who we think the stars of a team, he would never be able to do it without his two teammates. Nobody can carry somebody that isn't pulling their weight and someone that isn't doing fantastic. So no matter how many times we mention certain players, it's just a matter of his teammates are also there to support him. But the, the, the scary part about Flipside is every single one of them, Greasy, Marky, and Cooks here, on any given day can just destroy everyone. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, we've seen... Uh, we've seen Flipside have a couple rough games here and there, um, but they always pull through. They always manage to communicate with each other, say, hey guys, let's get our footing down. Um, and they mentioned how professional they've been in their comms a lot more lately instead of joking around. And th I think that's absolutely important. I mean, mm -hmm. they're using that to, to make sure they can say, guys, settle down, let's get it straight. And we eventually see them just start to dominate. And it definitely shows. I mean, you can almost see that moment of when they're like, okay, we really need to take this seriously. Not that I think they ever started jokingly, but you can see that moment of when they're like, okay, we're going to hone in yeah. and we're going to start taking these wins. And they really just kind of flick on. All the mistakes kind of drop off. You don't see them, you know, doubling up on each other and falling all over each other, getting the bumps. But it's funny because I've watch. i been watching Take 3, especially, you know, in this high-stakes scenario, and it's really hard for me to pinpoint their tactics. They just seem to be doing some interesting things. They're positioning where they need to. A lot of reactionary take play. Three. Yeah, well, take, take three is, I mean, their, their defensive passing, if you watch them in this next game, has been on point. They're making sure that they're just not giving away possession. They're like, okay, we can't go on offense yet. We can't create an attack. Let's just make sure we keep hold of that ball. As we come down into game number two, Flipside Tactics took the first one against take three. But in an overtime, 47 seconds, take three is playing strong right now. We'll see if they can take Game number two, as they try to get an early attack here. Insult with possession. See if he can get a pass off that backboard. Out to Zane Jackie, coming from a weird angle. Does his best, but that does get cleared by Flipside. Down to the other end, and a shot potential. Greasy can't put it into the top corner. Marky, a little bit too far behind to take advantage of the rebound. We will see a counterattack coming up from take three. We'll see Insult make it back quick. Greasy was ready for an attack there. Managed to stop that advance. That's going towards the net again, though. Good rotations from take three to stop this attack, but it is not over yet. Marky with a shot on net. Rizzo stopping that one on the goal line. See if they can push it out past the midfield. The pressure on from flip side. They are not letting this go until they get a goal at this point, it looks like. I mean, you can just see the rotations of take three on defense. There's always someone in net, and you can tell they're talking Back to each other. Oh, Rizzo! So close there. You see those passing plays from Flipside setting up, and that is a scary spot for take three when you're on defense seeing those set up. They have a chance now for a counterattack. Zane up in the air. Greasy already ready to meet that one on the backboard. Cooks with a forward pass. Greasy trying to keep the momentum forward. Leaves it for Marky instead. Good communication from the F3 boys. Rizzo off the backboard. Meets that one at midfield. Touches that one down, but doesn't really get a play started up. Flipside moving the other way with a no. shot from Cooks here, putting the first one in for Flipside. Using the ceiling as a pass, we see Marky smack it off the ceiling. Cooks are going to follow it through. Gets there just before Zane Jackie. You see him upside down trying to get the good touch, too. He wanted to make sure he put a lot of power on it, but Cooks here beat him to the chase. Now we have Flipside up by one goal, but one goal can be answered quickly by take three. And they keep doing what they're doing because it's working. Very well to keep Flipside at bay. We'll see if they can get one started here. Zane, a little bit off on that, tries to get a last ditch effort out. Go over two, though. Insole, a little bit too far forward, expecting that play to not develop. Will not be able to continue the pressure there. Cucks over two. Only has one more to beat, but to the corner he goes. Misses the boost and the ball. He'll be out of the play. Insole also with a miss. Markey can't win that 50 50 as Insole carries that one forward. Now take three on the attack. Waiting to see what Cooks does with that ball off the backboard. Markey grabs that pass all the way to the other end. A touch from him on target. Markey almost finishes that one off. So clean when they set up their passing plays. It always results in at least something close or forces the take three defender to have to make a save. A chance now for take three as they get a midfield passing play started up. Off the backboard, Rizzo Whoa! with the finish. It's tied up now. Take three puts one in with two and a half minutes left. Back and forth, Rizzo gets the touch up top and then St. Jackie there to just tie it down a tiny bit. 
that slight alteration of trajectory messed up a take their, uh, sorry, a flip side defender just enough to give Rizzo the opportunity. Those are those passing plays I was talking about. Now all tied up. We see ourselves exactly where we saw ourselves in game number one with a tied series, potentially another overtime, but Flipside trying to change that with a shot. A little bit off, Cooks can't keep that one on target. Markey, good air control, a little bit off. A shot on the goal line. Cooks here will be able to finish it off. The pressure too much for take three. You know, it wasn't pretty, but it still worked out. Markey <laughs> hitting off the side, trying to get the second touch. Insult thought he had it. Greasy just hitting it on the crossbar. And Cooks here, on his retreat, realized he's like, oh, I guess I'll finish Ball's it. here. I might as well finish it off. Markey says himself it's usually him scoring. The weird ones, but Cooks takes that one, and it doesn't matter who gets it because now they are up two to one with two minutes left. Lots of time for take three. Again, they answer the last one. They can answer this one. Passing plays between Insole and Rizzo. Rizzo now can't quite get a touch on that. The fall down can't feel that one out either. Cooks up to Markey, a shot on net. Zane Jackie, good rotation to keep that one out. The nice clear down to the other end. Getting the boost, at least, and possession of the ball. He can get a pass past Cooks. Not past Markey though, Insole waiting at the midfield. Tries to send that up to Zane, but Zane is out of the play now. The possession will move over to flip side. We'll see if they can keep that momentum moving down towards take three's end. Eventually the possession into Insole's hands, up to Zane. Zane with a shot, but met by Markey due to the 50-50 going to Cooks here. Now flip side looking for a play, a little bit weird positioning, but Cooks, what? Just get the dunk, but not in Greasy has to finish it. What a play set up from Cooks. <laughs> what a dunk from Cooks. Insole had to clear, and Cooks here. Unbelievable, he jumped so much earlier than that, and he just soared right on by with that Batmobile. Didn't matter to him, he took the dunk and gave his teammate a, oh man. Incredible setup coming out from Cooks here to set themselves two goals ahead now against take three in game number two. We'll see if they could set themselves at match point if they take this game. A what shot, angle. just a little off from Cooks here. No finish from Markey. That will stay out of the net. A minute, 15 left now. Two goals for take three. Looking a little bit dire for their situation, but Zane trying to get control. That's a shot towards the net, a long one from across midfield. Greasy following it up still. Gets that to Markey. Not enough to push that in front of the net, but the pressure coming up from flip side tactics is what we're used to seeing. Take three, trying to make a break out here. 54 seconds left for them to get two goals. And the way Flipside's playing, this is going to be very difficult with Cox with another one. Off the crossbar, no finish though from them as Greasy puts one on target. Take three having difficulty with their defense now and cry, trying to find that counter attack. Flipside taking great use of the entire field space. They're spreading out wide. They're getting the touch of the oh, no! A pass from take three to Greasy. He takes advantage and puts another one in. Take it out. Just look at what they have control of. Markey's got the back wall. Greasy's down and Cux was back. They had the entire field covered. Tried to put it out, but Rizzo wasn't able to get the real hit he wanted. And Greasy's going to be able to make this a three goal lead with only 31 seconds remaining. I think Flipside has this one in the bag here as long as they just make sure Take Three does not score, as you said, in the next 30 seconds. But they are starting to look like they have the momentum in their favor. Flipside coming out strong in game at number two against Take Three. And I'm sure that will carry over into the next game as they try to put at least one more to just show Take Three that they are ready to take this series. Take Three wasn't able to get their flow this game. Flipside did a fantastic job of shutting down every opportunity. They spread wide and they didn't do what sometimes they tend to do, which is group up or just overcommit for shots. They know they're all such good strikers, so sometimes they see an opportunity and they all think they can make it, so they'll all go one by one. Are they gonna get another one? Markey puts in a fifth one into like 10 seconds of zero time. Now to be fair, Rizzo seemed pretty aggressively positioned, hoping they could probably get one more in, but still a fantastic flick, just shy of touching the ground, almost got there on the line of the net, but flip side is going to take game number two. They're really just not letting, you know, take three, get that groove that we've seen them have, especially when they really start to pick up the pace. I love that you bring that up because I think that's what take three's been doing to get through this series. They're just playing slow and smart, making sure to watch their opponents and not make any silly mistakes on offense and say, okay, give us the ball, then we'll create in a counter attack. Take three's been so good at that, but I think flip side has caught on to their shenanigans and said, hey guys, if you're gonna let us come into your own end, we will put the pressure on and Take Three had a hard time dealing with that in game number two. The bigger issue is that Take Three doesn't really have a safe, safe space to put the ball. Every time they try and clear, there's somebody always there to take control. And as we know, everybody on flip side can control the ball in a slow-paced game. 
and they're good at 1v1 situations, which is a big part of their strong suit as well. Individually, they all have very high mechanics. So every time Take-Three try and clear the ball, they're just going to trap it, bring it out, and they're just going to continue putting on the pressure, not letting Take-Three get that groove, not letting Zane Jackie have that offensive positioning that he loves to have. You're right. I mean, when you're playing against a team that has such wide rotations like that, and no matter where you send the ball, what do you do at that point? You're going to have to find, maybe bring the ball down to the ground, maybe get really long clears from your backboard. What do you do? And that's what Take 3 has to talk about right now in between this game and the next. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves with a 3-0. This is a tough spot for Take 3 because they're already down two points. It's a match point for Flipside. Now, one of the things we do see Take 3 do quite accurately is a lot of times if it's near their own net, they're actually able to get a really hard clear all the way down all the way across and hit the backboard of their opponents. Mm -hmm. But the problem is if they keep doing that, a team like this deals with it pretty well. They follow underneath it, they trace it well, they follow the ball and get it clear. You're right, they will learn to adapt. Game number three, we will see if Flipside Tactics can get that full sweep over Take 3 to move themselves on into that lowers finals, or if Take 3 will get that reverse sweep themselves. They just have to do what they do best. And we'll see if that'll be enough as Flipside trying to put on the early attack, can't find a goal off that kickoff. This will be the chance for Take 3 to get that breakout chance they need to get an early goal to set themselves on the right foot at the beginning of game number three. Markey trying for a 50-50, trying to get that dunk for an early goal here. They can't quite finish it off, but the pressure already starting from Flipside. We'll see how Take 3 can deal with it. A good team pinch sends that one towards the net. Just off the crossbar, almost going in. That would have been what Take 3 needed. Not lucky enough for them, but hopefully they can use that to bring momentum into their play. But now we're going to see Cook here try and gain control. We see these soft touches from him all the time. And so with a flick up. No follow from his teammates, though. Zane Jackie waiting for Marky to give it to him. Waits nicely, but right back into Greasy's hands. Zane Jackie hoping that rolled up the wall, but it does go out to Greasy instead. A bounce instead of a roll. A hot play here for Rizzo. Can he get the second touch? No, but at least a pass to Insul, but not enough power that goes way wide. We're still at 0-0, just over a minute of gameplay pass so far in game number three. Rizzo and Insul both up, but Cooks here finds a spot to squeeze through. A pass towards the net. Trying to get one out off the crossbar there. Marky Duda with a shot. Rizzo ready in net. Does keep that one out, but no one there now if Greasy had gotten that one. Takes out a player instead. It'll have only two on offense for take three. Zane Jackie losing 50-50 and the position on that. Cooks tries to push it past. Insole there with support for Zane Jackie. Rizzo out of the play. Zane with one on target, but Marky waiting backwards. Sends that one far down to midfield. Greasy carrying the momentum forward. Can't get it past Insole. Some back and forth plays here, but not ping pong. These guys are keeping control, but the defense on both teams doing very well. Yeah, they're getting one, two or three maybe good touches, but then that fourth one just tends to be a little out of Whoa! reach. Oh, almost, and Rizzo trying to get the far shot. Greasy almost putting in his own net there. We'll see some pressure starting from take three. This could be their chance. Rizzo hoping for that one to drop down. Can't quite get that one in. The pressure's still on, though. They need to keep this pressure up. Wild Flipside struggles to get someone in net. An angle, angle shot from Enzo. To the far side. Enzo puts one in and pulls himself into the lead. Giving them a comfortable one goal lead so at least they can relax a little bit for the remainder of this game. Enzo with an angle, beating out Market Duda before he could get back. Great placement all the way across, just out of reach. Absolutely amazing placement. Two and a half minutes left. They just have to hold off any attacks, which is not going to be an easy feat whatsoever. From Flipside, one early on the kickoff there as they try to put one in. Can't quite, the defense stopping that out, but no one in that now. Insul can't do anything, puts it in his own net, and we're tied up again. Expecting the hit here, Markadona gets a touch to the side. That bounce a little wonky and hit that uncomfortable corner spot, but then when Marky missed it completely off of that second touch, it pulled the goalie out, expecting it. We talked so many times when you're expecting your opponent to do something and you're trying to play the reactionary game, you're playing a dangerous game. Absolutely, and so hard for Insul to be patient there because you don't know if someone is about to attack. Ends up putting it in his own. Two minutes left and another one. Four cooks here, this time by himself, and they're in the lead. Solo plays from him. We get that, that was actually a beautiful touch from Markey, but then when it doesn't go unanswered off the, or when it doesn't go answered, apologies, off that backboard, it gives Cooks here plenty of time to get the angle. We know he can strike from pretty much anywhere in his opponent's half. Oh, I almost want to say anywhere on the field, per se. <laughs> But again, when those things go unanswered off the backboard, honestly, if either team did that, I would expect Take 3 to, to capitalize as well. You have to at this level of play. Cooks are trying. Oh, Crazy, flying in.
in like a rocket, stuffs it away. What on earth just happened? Cookster gets his first touch after it gets passed out, and then Greasy goes up and hits. <laughs> what? That hit everybody Every in the way in. There's like six touches on the way in the net. Unfortunate for take three, but now a two-goal lead for Flipside Tactics. Very quickly, too, they get those one in succession. Two minutes left, though, now for take three. An easy save for Cooks, but Rizzo puts it right back off the backboard. Markey clears it away before Insole can get there. That's going to bounce towards the net. Cooks to clear that one up to Markey. Gets it past Zane Jackie. No one in net, but Greasy a little bit too far behind to finish off that play. Sends that one a little bit too hard to the far side for Flipside to do anything with it. And now take three on the attack. Cooks has to keep control of this. Greasy shoving that one past. Takes it from Cooks here. May set them in a weird spot now as take three have two on offense and control of the ball. Rizzo can't get a pass out there and they will have to try back in their own end as that ball passes the midfield line. Two people up for take three. They have to be careful as Insult carries that one completely across the field. Marky just waits patiently as that gets set down for him. Decent repositioning, but a lot of boost wasted for Insult trying to bring that across. I think once he realized he took that from a teammate, he had to try and keep control. You don't want to give up possession, right. especially on halfway line. Cooks here! Cooks here! with the second touch, almost getting that in. So close for Cooks here. I just want to see one of those. He tried one on the last one, but there's Zane Jackie with a long shot. Puts him in, only one goal, but one minute remaining. Zane Jackie keeping it close off the wall. Nothing too complicated, but a fantastic shot from the side. Greasy tried to react to it just a little bit short. A lot of times with those, when you feel confident that you have the angle, it puts you in a place where you take a little bit of time because you want the perfect touch. But if you take that extra quarter second too long, you just let a shot go right by you. Absolutely. We'll see if Take 3 can do this. Otherwise, Flipside Tactics will be moving on. One goal. They have to keep Greasy. Extends it again, though, by two goals. This is the second time we've seen one come right off the ceiling straight into net. <laughs> Greasy hits it up. I don't think he expected it to drop the way it did. He definitely wanted to hit the ceiling and have it drop right back down. But that's why you want to be taking that from net as take three. But right off kickoffs, we know flip side. They've got plenty of ways to approach. Greasy just keeps throwing his body into the plays and manages to get those balls into the net. That's all you got to do sometimes is just throw yourselves in there. But 42 seconds left. Take three has to get two goals. Good passing play from Insole, but Rizzo couldn't finish it off. There's one. Cooks here will stop it from Zane Jackie. Insole not ready to give up. This is do or die for take three. They have to give it everything. 30 seconds remaining, or take three will be going home. Off the backboard, Greasy trying to put it in, but stopped up by Insole. 20 seconds left now for two goals. 10 seconds apiece. Rizzo, Zane Jackie have to be quick here. They have to put the pressure on if they want to stay alive. Otherwise, Flipside will just wait out their time here. Now Rizzo with the ball. Insole, quick drift turn around, but this might be it. Off the backboard. They can get another one. Marky with a shot. Cooks here with the pressure. And that's going to be a flip side tactics. We'll take out take three and move on in the bracket. They are able to continue on so promisingly. I have to give take three so many props. Able to do what they did, trying to be the North American heroes that we all wanted them to be over <laughs> in the other region. They fought valiantly, but flip side tactics seem to be just playing consistent and hard, and they will move on. Well, and this is it. Now, NA out of the game. We have EU pushing forward. One of them will take it, but I mean, flip side, not uh, strangers to being in this lower bracket. They no. are very familiar with this, and I do not expect that to stop. Those games fairly close, though. Take three, put up a fight. They did not go out without putting up a fight at all. Honestly, if there's one thing they proved, it's that they were better than everyone expected them to be under pressure. And I think a lot of it has to go with their attitude. I hope they're still having a good time up there. They played so well, but flip side tactics seem to be honing in, but they have this awkward habit of putting themselves in the lower bracket just so they can climb their way out of the hole all the way to the top. They still have a little bit of a battle ahead of them, but they are still, they are now one step closer. You're absolutely right. Well, there we go. Flip side moving forward into the for sorry, forward into the lowers bracket, but I want to hear a little bit more from Marky Duda on stage with Kelly. Thank you very much. Marky Duda, give it up for Flipside. <laughs> now, you faced take three in the round of eight, and this time you went 3-0 against them in the round of eight, you went uh, three and one. What exactly changed? What did you learn from the round of eight to be able to have a more dominant win? I think uh, we learned to communicate a lot more. I think that's the main thing. We're just non-stop talking, telling each other where we are, and it's, it's working well. Communication is really important in these games, and there's so much going on. How exactly are you able to communicate effectively? Um, I have no idea. We just talk really fast and understand each other well, you know? 
just shout random words and they, it works. <laughs> So, Northern Gaming, you guys have seen this many times, and you've had very dominant victories. Again, them in season one, four of them. You went 3-0 in the last season. What are you taking from that into this next game? Uh, greasy. Greasy. So, you're confident against them. What, what sets you apart from, their, from Northern Gaming? I think we have slightly better uh, passing plays, maybe, but they're very quick and very strong, so I think we're pretty even, even match, in my opinion. Well, we're about to find out. Everyone give it up again for Flipside Tactics. Let's head back to the analysts to see what they thought of that last match. Thank you, Kelly. Congrats to Flipside Tactics staying alive and keeping the dream alive for them. Uh, again, no strangers to the lower bracket of Rocket League Lance as they did it in the last season and they are still alive. But kudos to take three. You know. They were the last North American team, the number four seat, and they're the last ones alive. But let's take a look at the Mobile One high-performance replay from that match as we recap the dominant victory there from Flipside Tactics. And this first game was so close with Take 3. They needed to win this one. And then it just happened to be a random greasy dunk just barely going in. And that's a heartbreaker there for Take 3. Once they got that first win, then one after another, you saw these guys fall into place. Cook's here all over the place. You see Greasy getting comfortable again. But still, Take 3 tried to battle back. They had some good pass plays. You see Zanjaki getting up and getting involved. And all of that was just because of the subtle mistakes from uh, Flipside Tactics just wasn't enough. That game two was insane. Flipside had 20 shots. That's a new live finals record. They held the previous record versus Cosmic with 17. They showed up in game two and uh, watch out during the game and Flipside is pretty warmed up at this point. Right, but they've been here before. This is what they do best. And now they have to go up against a team that they're comfortable against, someone that they've seen plenty. But look how comfortable they look against Take Three. This is something that it's like they plan it. Let's drop down, let's start building momentum, let's get the crowd on our side and let's battle back. Yeah, they've won seven straight versus Northern. This series was over right there with that greasy goal that was just kind of random, but it just happened, you know, like take three, their luck ran out possibly, or, you know, but they had a lot of fun, and I think the crowd loved take three here. Of course, they probably love Flipside a little bit more. It should be really fun, because then we got the big three in Europe left. Right, and, and that, that's really interesting yeah. too, because at the end of the regular season of Europe, we had three teams that were tied. You know which three teams those were? Mocked Aces, Flipside Tactics, Northern Gaming. And those are the three remaining teams in this grand final. So um, I guess it worked out the way it was supposed to, in a sense. Yes. Like, these guys, like you said, they were tied for third in season play. And then all of a sudden, like, let's just flop it out so we can make this possible. So uh, script's going according to plan. And of course, North America, really disappointed. They finished one and five here with only a fourth place finish. They're going to have to regroup for next season because it was not pretty this entire tournament. But Gibbs, uh, take three, yeah. did do pretty well in this tournament. They had a good run. They and, did. Uh, I know they're Devin pros, so I figured I would try out for the team here. So okay. just give me one second. I think that was decent. I'll see that on Reddit real soon. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but take three, what a run they had for North America. Hats off to them. They showed way more than anyone thought. Everyone had them out on day one. Pretty much no one had them winning even one series, and what a show in fourth place. They must be thrilled. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. I think everyone here is having a ton of fun as we watch the final day of the Rocket League Championship Series. This is the Grand Finals. Coming up next, we got another best of seven. Winner moves on, loser goes home. It's Northern Gaming versus Flipside Tactics, number one and two seeds from Europe. We're gonna take a short break, and we'll be back with the RLCS Grand Finals.